We're joined now by one of our regular visitors, Niagara College Director of Athletics and Student Engagement, Michelle O'Keefe. Today, we look at some of this year's athletic award winners. And Michelle, let's begin with a brand new award. This is named for somebody special. Yeah, it's exciting. Ray Sarkis is retiring after 44 years at the college. Uh, we worked with the Niagara College Student Administrative Council to create the Ray Sarkis Award. And we surprised Ray with this award at the banquet. What is this award for? We wanted to honor a student who uh, is part of our varsity sport in some way, whether they were a student athlete or someone who works at the desk or perhaps game day staff or broadcast student. Uh, and so this first award we gave to a young man named AJ Scotia from Grimsby. He's studying in the sport management program. Uh, AJ practiced with the soccer team and was part of our game day crew uh, for all three sports that need statisticians and didn't miss a game in two years. Great to have an award from the athletic department for someone who supports athletics, not just the superstar athletes. Yeah, you know, we wanted to make sure that it it wasn't another all-star award, um, but an all-star for off the field of play, I guess is how I would categorize it. Did Ray know this was going to be no, in his name? No, no, he had no idea. How did he react? He had a, you know, Ray, he had that sheepish look on his face as if, oh, geez, what have you done? <laughs> and then I think once we talked a little bit about it and he heard AJ's name being called, he was quite proud. That's great. Male and female athletes of the year. Let's begin with them as we list some of the award winners. Our female athlete of the year was uh, Sydney Sika from our soccer team. She is uh, two years in a row. She's been our athlete of the year. Um, an all Canadian. And an all Canadian for two years. She is a stellar soccer player. And the male athlete the of the year? Male athlete was Delroy Grandison from our men's basketball team. He was the second team all star in the OCAA and had a, a very good season with basketball. You had some rookies of the year, both male and female, that you honored? Our female rookie of the year was Tori Hultink from soccer and Noah Vogel also from soccer. Why them? What did they do? You know, they showed a lot of energy on the field. It's always intimidating when you come in from high school sport to playing at a college level. Sometimes it's young adults against adults. So um, with Tori and Noah, they both did a great job of representing themselves on the field of play and of course off the field of play. You bring up a good point in college sports, university sports as well. Is there an age limit? Uh, no, no, there's, well, that's a good question. I, I don't think but there is. But it could be because I know I'm familiar with a lot of uh, hockey players, OHL players who after 21, 22 years old, they go into post-secondary and they make it on a hockey team. Yeah, I think I don't think there is an age. There is obviously a year limit. You can't play more than five right. years, but I don't think there's an age limit. And, and that can there can be some big physical differences. Oh, for sure. Some people hit their maturity level early, um, and you, sometimes you get 17-year-olds in their first year of college. So it's always a big physical difference. You hand out some male and female tournament sports players of the year. Two curlers, Nick and Amelia, won that award. Yeah, you know, Nick Lemieux and Amelia uh, Bender have also had amazing seasons this year. As we discussed with Amelia on the show a couple of weeks ago, uh, the women's curling team won a silver medal at provincials and nationals, and Nick did a great job on the mixed curling team. We had Amelia in with you about a month ago in the studio. Fantastic kid. Yeah, and I knew she was getting the award, and I couldn't say anything. How did she take it uh, that night? I think night? they're all, you know, the athletes are always pleasantly surprised when they win these awards. They know that they might be in the running for them, but I think once you know, they're all dressed up and everybody's in the banquet room and your name gets called, I think it's always quite an honor. She was such a great spokesperson here on camera for college athletics. And you know what? Everybody gets so nervous when they, oh, we ask them to come and do your show, Mike, and everybody's like, oh, I've never done that before. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this. And, and they always do a very good job. Leadership awards went to Alexa and Micah. Yeah, Micah on the Micah Newitz on the uh, volleyball team and Alexa DeRoche from curling both had great seasons as well. And you know, it's the, the the leadership award is not only for field of play, but it's how do you manage yourself and your team, and can you help everybody rise? Um, and so it's always nice to get give those awards out. Next, we have the Scholastic Awards. What qualifies a student to win the Scholastic Awards? You know, the one thing we're very proud of at Niagara College is our Knights student-athletes do very well overall on, in the classroom. 
and to be an all an all Ontario scholastic award or an all Canadian you have to have an over 80 average so for our Knights Awards it's not easy to get this award because we have so many strong students Elijah and Natasha were the winners Elijah Bujardini and Alexa Dujardin from both from volleyball um, they are very strong students uh, Natasha's in her fifth year graduating she, which program uh, she works with special needs kids and she's got over a 96% average. Wow. And Eli's coming back next year. He's still got another year to go. And um, he's also very, very strong in the classroom. It's impressive to hold a 96% average while you're committed to practicing, going away for tournaments and, and games. We talk to the athletes about that all the time. And some of them have part-time jobs. Some of them have volunteer positions. Eli is going to volunteer next year on a, on a sexual violence task force at the school. Like these meetings take time. And it's important that, it's important from my opinion that the student athletes are seen in those roles um, because they do have exemplary, they are exemplary examples of what you could do as a holistic student, especially as an athlete. To your point, the time management is unbelievable. And that really speaks to the second part of your role, student engagement as well. Yeah, you know, the student engagement part of our role, orientation, leadership, mentorship, it's important that the college's um, strategic plan, which includes holistic student experience, is really magnified. And so it's very complimentary in my eyes to see the athletes and the engagement program come to that sweet spot where where we're recognizing our athletes for those things. One final award as we get close to the end, uh, Amy Dannon with the Torchbearer Award? Yeah, the CCAA partnered with Huddle to create a Torchbearer Award. It's someone who plays at a high level of uh, collegiate sports and is very active in their home community. Um, and Amy from the curling team is uh, very involved in her hometown working with the junior farmers uh, and the particular award uh, that she got was for the work she did with a ham supper during the pandemic. Um, she and her colleagues uh, in her community held these ham suppers to raise money for those who were suffering. Um, so the CCAA uh, is, has named Amy the, one of the torchbearers, which we, we think is just really special. Michelle, thanks for drawing attention to the achievements of these great award winners. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me.